Hey guys, it's Ree. What's up? I hope you're good. Welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to what I read in January. Um, I will not be making a TBR for February because lately I have not been sticking to TBRs. So, this is the only one I'll be doing. The only video about uh, reading for the month. No, that's not true. Anyways, uh, this is what I read. I will not be making a TBR. And let's go. <laughs> so, I already told that in what I read in December. But during December, I hit a big reading slump and started reading a lot of rom-coms. Um, well, I kept <laughs> doing that in January. Um, and I also have, like, a rom-com reading vlog coming out next week. So I will only be brief on those books because <laughs> I have a whole fucking one hour long reading vlog about them coming up. First book I read this month was She Gets the Girl by Rachel Lipcott and Allison Derrick, which is a coming of age, um queer rom-com it is about alex and molly who are both in uh like starting college alex knows how to get the girl doesn't know how to keep her molly has a huge crush on this girl she'd never actually talked to and doesn't know how to flirt doesn't know how to get the girl doesn't know anything <laughs> about that so alex who wants to show her girlfriend that she's able to, like not flirt with other people goes and help molly to get the girl she wants to the thing is they end up falling for each other um i liked it it was very sweet i liked seeing the friendship develop but it did like the romance did start like 260 pages in and 300 and something pages 370 pages it was a little bit late, but with all the differentship, it was still quite good. I gave this a four star, if I'm not mistaken. Next, I got a pre-order that came in. I forgot about that, but I was so fucking happy when it came in. Loaf to Love You by Allie Azelwood. Um, Miss Allie Azelwood is treating us right this year because this came out in January. Then we have a book in June and a book in, like... October or November, I think. And I will be reading them. <laughs> so this uh, book actually features three novellas, which is Under One Roof, Stuck With You, and Below Zero. Um, which is, they're all about the same, three girls of the same friend group. And their love stories, as I said, novellas. So we have Under One Roof, where... Um, Mara, uh, Mara's mentor actually dies and in her will gives her her house. But that lady's nephew owns part of the house. So they have a roommate situation. So that's nice. Um, we have a double timeline. Kind of. So, at the start of it, we have, like, when they realize they like each other. And then we go back six months and, like, follow, like, the development of it. And then, like, after they realize they like each other. Uh, I liked it. I gave it a 4.5. It was very sweet. But, like, I just love everything Ali Azelwood writes. So. <laughs> like, The Love Hypothesis is my favorite book has been for the past like two years so yeah <laughs> then we have stuck with you which is about sadie who gets stuck in a new york elevator for an hour with her work nemesis and this is also double point uh double timeline basically a couple months ago they had a fling for a whole day so you know going um meeting in the morning, going on a date, spending the night together, and then shit happened and they didn't talk to each other for 
long fucking time. And now that they're stuck together in the elevator, they talk about it. And they talk it out. And I loved it so fucking much. I gave it a five stars. It was my favorite thing I read this month. Just this novella. It was so amazing. I loved it so much. And then we have Below Zero, which is right here. Like, the little covers are on here. Which is about Hannah and Mara's cousin, actually. So, this is also double timeline. So, we have Mara, who works at NASA, and goes on this, like... Oh, fuck. I think it's A-M-A-S-E? Which is in Norway to, like, tr um, work on the rovers, because the... Um, the ice and the snow and everything kind of is like the most the closest to mars um terrain we get like the terrain is the closest i'm that's what i think <laughs> i'm not good at science i love i love it but i'm not good she had a little thing with an older man working at nasa well older He's, like, about her age, but he already worked at NASA when she was in college. She has a little thing with him. And then, like, they think shit goes wrong, but, like, eh. You know. <laughs> she doesn't do a relationship, and you kind of want relationships, so they don't go any further. And when she's in Norway, she gets stuck in a ravine. Sprain her ankle. There's a storm coming there's no way for her to get out and he saves her so yeah it was good i think give that one a four star <laughs> next i read some girls do gave that one a four star so this is about morgan and ruby it's a queer coming of age again so morgan is out and proud and gets kicked out of her catholic school because of it and um ruby is so deep in the closet she probably has found narnia and she is a pageant queen even though she doesn't want to be like she's living her mom's dreams so they meet and start falling for each other but since uh ruby is in the closet like that she doesn't tell anyone she's falling for her and when they do get in a kind of a relationship um morgan is hidden from the world uh, like, their relationship is hidden, and she has trouble living with it, and they work it out, and stuff like that. I gave it a four star because I realized high school, um, age thing, uh, I'm, I don't love high school romance anymore, but it was still good, and I related to Morgan way too much because my ex was not out, out to our family, so I was kind of pushed in the closet on that side because her family didn't know like I was LGBT um but at least I mean at least at school we were out and together and she doesn't even get that anyways it was sweet next I read book lovers fucking loved it and I cried so this is about Nora and Charlie um Nora is seen as this hard, mean, severe woman in the editing, nope, in the, she's a literary agent, and she's seen like it's very mean, and Charlie is seen kind of like that, but in the editing, book editing world, and one day she and her sister go on a little three-week vacation to a city, and she ends up bumping into Charlie, which anytime they tried to work together in the past, well, once, like, nothing happened of it. Like, it wasn't even good. And they end up, like, starting to fall for each other in that little small town and work together. It was very sweet. Pretty sure I gave that a five star. <laughs> Quite liked it. Yeah. It was, like, on, um... So many people's uh, favorite books of the 
of 2022 lists and I can see why. Next, I had a little reread, <laughs> Little Hunt Honeymooners by Christina Lauren. I reread it because I gave that as a Christmas gift to my mom and I was like, I need to read it again. So I did. So this is about Ethan and Olive who are nemesis-ish and they're siblings. So Ethan's brother and Olive's twin sister get married. And at the wedding, there is this like fish self shellfish buffet shellfish is that can you use that for food or is that only like selfishness shellfish shellfish there we go not selfish shellfish um there's this buffet and olive doesn't eat that because of allergies and ethan doesn't eat it because of who just doesn't like buffets he has a thing with bacteria and buffets and everyone gets sick from the buffet except them so they go and pretend to be the newlyweds on the honeymoon because the honeymoon cannot be um the dates cannot be changed cannot be like reimbursed or anything because they want it so yeah we have some forced proximity we have some fake dating and i really like them and dane is a fucking bitch didn't like him from the start and when you read the whole thing you're like oh that's why <laughs> i gave it a five star second time i'm reading it second time i'm giving it a five star and then that was the end of my rom-com reading i picked up a classic there are two classics I wanted to read, and I read one of them, this one. So the two classics are Perfume, like a story about a serial killer, and Carmilla. Um, let's just say lesbian vampires that inspired Dracula. Like inspired Bram Stoker to write Dracula, so. It was in like 1870, it's 100 and like... 40 pages, short and sweet, but it was very sweet. So basically, Laura lives in this manor house with her father and a couple of assistants. And one day, this girl is practically dropped on their doorstep. Okay, Carmel is practically dropped on the doorstep because there is a carriage accident in front of the manor house. And Carmilla is too weak to keep going with her mother. So she just stays in the manor house. And, you know, Laura starts getting sick. And just weaker. And doesn't really know why. But she has her friend Carmilla, right? And also, like, I love um, this edition. If I can find it. Like, this edition is just so pretty, and it's illustrated. I'm not going to show the last illustration because uh, Carmela is naked in that one, so. But. It is such a beautiful copy. Um, and basically, I got the uh, recommendation from Noelle Gallagher here on YouTube. I love her so much, and. Yeah. It was good. I gave it a three stars because it was not like overwhelmingly good. And because I kind of had some trouble at some point reading <laughs> the writing. Um, English is not my first language. That's maybe why even though I'm practically bilingual. Anyways, it was, it was good. Last but not least, the book I am currently reading. I'm like halfway through. It is Prince of the Sorrows. Which is the Broken Blood series, book one. I think it's a duology. If it's not, well, only two of them are out. So this book is about Saffron, who is a changeling in the Fey world, and to be sent back to the human world this year. But 
at some point he learns the true name of the Haifei Prince. And, you know, uses this to his advantage and <laughs> to, like, stay there. And he makes friends with the prince. I know it's an enemy to lovers kind of situation. So, uh, the quality or anything is not the same because I had to switch what I was recording with because the other one is full. Anyways, uh, we're talking about this book. So, where was I? Oh yeah, he uses it to his advantage, and that's all I really know at this point, because I'm halfway through the first one, but there is a nursing back to health scene that just happened, and I just love these kind of scenes. Um, but there is a list of trigger warnings like that you need to know before you pick this book up, so you can like Google it, but it's like all of these here, the first page, so it's crude language violence and death mental and physical abuse slash bullying description of torture which i've had at this point as good descriptions can i say it that way <laughs> scenes of consensual sex non-consensual drugging by fantasy means i've had that also but there's like nothing big that happens after that but it's still like drugging someone did it really just lag um, then there's mild themes of sexual harassment, theme of indentured servitude, because, like, humans in the Fey world. Theme of fantasy-based bigotry, again, because of human in the Fey world, and themes of fantasy-based genocide. I have not gotten there, I do not know what they're talking about. So, also the cover art is just so fucking pretty. So this is Sylvian, and Sylvan, or Sylvian? Sylvan, and Saffron, which are two main characters, and the names of the changeling babies, like, the, the, they call them Benti, like, the human, the fake world, their names, I'm so sorry, we have Lettuce, Berry, Arrow, Saffron, uh, we have others, like, anyways, yeah, that's all I read. I am sorry about the quality changing in the middle of it. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.